spoken by Jesus and it says in verse 44 no man can do what? Come can come to me except the Father which hath sent me do what? Draw him. Draw him and I will raise him up at the last day. No man can come to me. No man. This morning I titled my message uh, You Can't Do It. You can't do it. You ever thought about that? You can't do it. You know, most people today are preaching, you can do anything you want to, but you can't do it. You cannot do this one thing. 
Let's pray this morning. Father, we thank you, praise you, and love you. Lord, speak to our hearts today. Help us, God, as we open up your words, Lord, that we can listen to you. And Father God, if this morning there's a person here, God, that you draw them to you, Lord God, I pray that they'll come forward. I pray that they'll give their life over to you. And Lord God, that you'd save them before it's too late. We thank you, Father, for what you're doing. And we love and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. You can't do it. These were the words that was given to me on Wednesday night. <laughs> you can't do it. This Wednesday night, I went to the ER over on Pelham, and uh, I thought I was in there just going to you know, give me some medicine or something, and I uh, knew it, it felt weird and felt different. But then I found out we was going to have surgery, and I said, well, I've never had surgery before. I, uh, be honest with you, I've never been put to sleep, never had, you know, drugs or anything like that. Uh, I didn't know what to expect. So these doctors, they come in, and the nurses, they're all gathered around my bed, and they're looking at me, and they was telling me, well, this is what we're going to do to you. We're going to take an incision right at your belly button, and then we've got two other incisions we're going to do. And we'll get in there and we'll blow your belly up and then we'll get in there and take your appendix out and you'll be good to go. That's how they described it to me. I said, well, that's pretty nonchalant there. It's, uh, <laughs> seems simple enough for me, you know. They didn't tell me it was going to feel like Mike Tyson just punched me in the gut afterwards. <laughs> but, uh, but then they started proceeding about what was going to take place afterwards. And then the doctor told me, he says, well, he says, after surgery, he said, you'll be in recovery. He said, for at least six weeks, you can't pick up anything beyond 10 pounds. I said, six weeks? I started adding up my brain. I said, six weeks, I'm going to be on vacation. I said, no, we're not doing this surgery. I said, no. He said, well, you got to have it. I said, man, six weeks? I said, I've got to go surfing. He said, you can't do that. I said, man, six weeks, I got the, I've got my yard work, I got stuff I need to do. He said, you can't do that. Every time I turned around, he kept saying, you can't do it. You can't do it. I'm thinking, well, what can I do? And he said, nothing. I said, well, great, that's awesome. I said, I appreciate that. But when you start thinking about it, you can't do it. Here in this passage of scripture, Jesus tells us we can't do it. And he tells us we cannot come to God. You ever thought about that? You and I, we can't come to God. And you and I would never come to God if it wasn't for him drawing us to him. If you can remember those that are saved this morning, know they've been bought by the blood of Jesus Christ, know they're on their way to heaven. You can remember the days and the years before you were saved. You can remember how wretched, how awful you really were before you were saved. And you can remember that you weren't going after God. You did not seek out God. And you did not love God. You did not live for God. You did not do what God wanted you to do because you were all about yourself, all about what you were wanting. It was until God sought you out and started drawing you to him to allow you to see your need in your life of salvation. Well, this is what Jesus is telling us in this passage of Scripture. If you look in verse 44 of John chapter 6, he says, No man can come to the Father. No man. When he puts that word no man, that means that it doesn't matter how educated you are, you cannot come to God. It doesn't matter how rich you are, your riches, you can't come to God with your riches. It doesn't matter who you are, no background, no, even if you're in the highest rank of society, he says, no man, no matter who you are, whether you are poor, dirt poor, or the filthiest rich you've ever seen, he says, no one can come to the Father. Not one person can. 
You can't do that. And you and I can't do it. We need help by Almighty God. We cannot come to the Father. I started thinking about this passage of Scripture, about things that we cannot do. And I started looking at my life. There's a lot of things that I cannot do. There's a lot of things that you look like in your life, and you can look and say, you know, I cannot do that either. You know, I look at those guys that play golf and go to the Masters, and they shoot in the 60s. I can't do it. I shoot in the 60s on nine holes, but not on 18. That's the only way I can get in the 60s. Can't do it. We are limited. But God says that we are limited of even coming to him. Out of all the strength, out of all the resources that we have in this world, out of all the knowledge that we have, nobody can come to the Father. We need help. We need help. In the book of Zechariah, Zechariah writes in chapter 4, verse 6, look what he says in this passage of Scripture. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Look what he says, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. God was telling Zechariah here in this passage of Scripture, he says, not by might nor by power. What he says is that you're not going to be able to do anything on your own strength or on your own power. It will not happen that way. Can you realize this morning, there's nothing you can do without the help of Almighty God? You can't talk, you can't think, you can't live, you can't even breathe without the help of Almighty God this morning. You're saying, well, I'm doing pretty good, no. You couldn't breathe if God didn't give you his air. Breathe your own air. You can't do it. It's God's air. And if God doesn't give you another breath in, in those lungs, you're out of here. You have no opportunity whatsoever on your own strength to breathe on your own. Only God does that. Only God wakes you up in the morning. Only God gives you another day to live on this earth. Only God does that. Not by my might, not by my power, but by the Spirit of God. He says, I do it. So folks, this morning, no man can come to the Father, not even in our own strength or in our own power. We can't do one single thing without the help of God. There's another passage of Scripture. If you look in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. Look what Paul writes about salvation coming to the Father, about mankind. Look what he says. But the natural man receiveth not, what? The things of the Spirit of God, for they are, what? Foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are, what? Spiritually discerned. You see, those who are lost will never understand the things that are spiritual. They'll never be able to comprehend the things of God as long as they're lost, folks. They'll never do it. That's the reason why the world looks at us that are Christians that believe in Jesus Christ, that believe in heaven, we believe in salvation, we believe in the redemption by the blood of Jesus Christ. They look at us like we are the nuttiest, craziest lunatics in the world. But these are the same people that believe that a man can be a woman and a woman can be a man. This is the same world that believes that a man can marry a man and a woman can marry a woman. This is the same world that says that you can take a little baby out of the mother's womb and sacrifice that baby, kill that baby, and call it abortion. But they look at us that believe in the blood of Jesus Christ and they think that we're lunatics. You want to know the reason why? Because they see it as foolishness. They see it as craziness to believe in Jesus. Because they are spiritually discerned. See, folks, this world needs help. They can't come to God on their own. They can't do what God wants them to do because they do not have the Spirit of God. They are spiritually discerned, and they cannot even know the things of God without what? The help. Almighty God. Amen. See, folks, you can't do it. You can't do it on your own.
Some of you here this morning may think that you can live a life that's acceptable to God. Folks, you can't do it. You cannot do it. There's not one person in here that can live a life that's acceptable by God on your own. You cannot do it. In the passage of scripture here that we find in Luke chapter 9, there's a passage of scripture here because there's a demon-possessed boy, and the father comes, and look what he says about the disciples. Look what he says here in Luke chapter 9, verse 40. Luke chapter 9, verse 40, it says, I besought thy disciples to cast him out, and they could not. They could not cast out the demons out of this boy. The father is coming. They say, look, we've asked your disciples, but the disciples, they couldn't do it. They couldn't cast this demon out. But they could. But they were trying to do it in their own strength, and they could not do it. See, folks, we need help. We need help of Almighty God in anything we do. We need help. Then it goes on in John chapter 15, verse 5. Look what it says here about what we cannot do. Look what he says. Jesus says, I am the vine, ye are the what? Branches. Ye that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. Then look what he says at the last part of that verse. For without me ye can do Nothing. Say that with me this morning. For without me, I can do what? Nothing. nothing. Without God, folks, we can do absolutely nothing without God. Many people today think that they can do things without God. Can I tell you this morning, we are powerless without the help of God. We are just measly little humans. Without the help of Almighty God. We can't think, we can't talk, we can't breathe, we can't walk, we can't do anything without the help of Almighty God. We need God's power in our churches. We need God's power in the life of his people once again. We need help. We need help in America today. We need help in our churches today. We've got churches thinking that they can make a church on their own. We've got churches thinking that they can reach people on their own. Because they've got enough money, they've got enough resources, they've got enough activities, they've got enough programs, they've got enough everything except one thing, and that is God. Right. Mm -hmm. See, folks, in our churches today, we believe that we can do everything, and we can leave God out, and we can still do it. Can I tell you something, folks? We, as men and women of God, can do absolutely nothing without the help of God. We need it. Several weeks ago, we've been praying for our church. Actually, a couple of months ago, we've been praying diligently that people, when they would sit in our sanctuary, that God would grip their hearts and show them their need for Him. Amen. That's what we need, folks, is that people will see their need. We don't need people to look at themselves saying, I'm okay. We need people to look at themselves and saying, I am wretched. I am a sinner. I need help, and only God can do it. Amen. We need help this morning. Can't do it by our own strength or our own power. But then there's a second thing I want you to see. And in Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6, he says these words, not by might nor by power. And then my favorite word in the whole Bible, but. Because when you read that word but, it's about to change everything that you just read. He says, but by what? My spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. You see, folks, we can do absolutely nothing on our own. But with the spirit of God and the help of God, we can do all things. We can have power to overcome sin. We can have power to overcome whatever it is, addiction in your life. God says he can overcome anything if you allow his spirit to do it. In the Old Testament, there's a great story of probably one of the most well-known Bible people that's ever lived. There was a story of a man named Samson. 
Samson's a very unique story. You probably heard it when you was a small child because it's a fascinating story about a man that was so strong he could kill thousands at a time with a jawbone of, a, of an ass. And it says that not only that, but he killed even lions with his bare hands. He was just a miraculous man that God used for Israel. Many people may look at Samson and they may even picture him as a great, big, muscular guy. Most time when you ask people, what do you think Samson looked like? They would say, well, he's got long hair because he never cut it. And we see that uh, men, most people would say that he is probably dark skin. He was probably just a big guy, muscles just ripping out of his shirt. He probably had to have shirts specially made, specially road made for him because he was so big. He was probably tall, handsome looking guy. We probably picture Samson as that. But can I tell you this morning, I believe Samson was probably the smallest guy in all the land of Israel. I believe that when people looked at Samson, he probably looked like a Barney Fife from the Andy Griffith show. Because if Samson had great muscles, and if he was big and huge in stature, then they could look at Samson and say, well, the reason why he's so strong is because of how big he is or how strong his muscles. But you see, folks, every time that Samson would do something, they'd always ask the question, where does he get his strength? See, folks, God does things to where he and he alone gets the glory. And I believe he took a probably the smallest guy, shortest, scrumiest looking guy you've ever seen, and made a huge man out of him with strength. But the Bible tells us in Judges, in Judges chapter 14, verse 5 and 6, this is a story about what Samson did one day. In Judges chapter 14, verse 5 and 6, look what it says. Then went Samson down and his father and his mother to Timnah and came to the vineyards of Timnah and behold a young lion, not an old lion, not an old crippled, crippled looking lion, but a young lion, ferocious lion, roared against him. You ever been around a lion when it roars? I have. We went down to University of North Alabama to play in the national championship. And on their campus, their mascot was a lion, and they had a lion on campus. It's fascinating to watch because you could walk up to the lion, and they had plexiglass that looked to be about that thick. I, I was hoping it was going to be about that thick. But this lion had this huge cage, and you could get all the way up to that glass, and that lion walked right in front of us. Man, his head looked to be that, that long. His mouth, and when he opened up his mouth, his teeth, his fangs looked to be that long. I was thinking, I said, man, that would go all the way through my leg. Huge paws. His paws was probably twice that size right there. Just massive looking lion. And then while we were standing there, that lion all of a sudden, let out a huge roar. I would try to do that this morning, but I don't think I will. <laughs> Let out a huge roar. Man, I tell you right now, it was so loud and so strong sounding. And one of the coaches from UNA said that they'd be in class on campus and in their office in campus, said that line would get to roaring and everybody would just shut down the class because it'd be so loud. It says that a lion roared against Samson as he was going to turn around. Look what it says in verse 6. And the what? The Spirit of the Lord came what? Mildly upon Samson. And he rent that line as he would have rent a kid. Let me 
tell you something, folks. I saw a lion in person up close and personal. I'll go ahead and tell you right now. I ain't written him like a little kid. That line is ferocious. That line is strong as could be. But the strength of Almighty God was so evident in the life of Samson. It says that Samson grabbed that line, ripped that line in two, tore his jaw in half. He took him by the tail, threw him around in the air, slammed him back and forth. Y'all thinking I'm just kidding and all that, but that's the way my mind's thinking. He's written this little line like a little kid. He's tossing him around like a little kitten. Kills the lion. Just like that. Why? Because Samson was so strong? No. Because the spirit of the Lord was upon Samson. Yeah. Not by might. Not by power. But by my what? Spirit. Saith the Lord. story goes on about Samson. Samson gets married and then his wife is killed. And then Samson finds another lady. Her name is Delilah. Delilah wanted to know where Samson got his strength. What was it? What was the thing that God told him not to do? Cut his hair. That if you cut your hair, my strength will be no more. He told her what the secret was. It wasn't in his hair. It was in God. <coughs> but that covenant that he had with the Lord was through his hair. And look what it says in Judges chapter 16. Judges chapter 16, verse 20. Look what it says. And she said, this is Delilah, the Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as at what? Other times before and shake myself. And he wist not that the Lord was what? Departed. Samson said he was going to go out and defeat all the Christians like he did time and time before. But here's the kicker, folks. He didn't realize that the Spirit of God had left him and was no longer with him. The Bible says that the Philistines took Samson and made him a beat him, plucked his eyeballs out <clears throat> because he had no strength in his body. Not by my folks. It's only by God's spirit. Can I tell you something this morning? There's a lot of churches this morning where they come to church every time, every Sunday, every Wednesday. They come and worship and they think that they are doing God a favor and they think that they are worshiping God. But God's spirit has left. They're trying to do it on their own strength, their own power. Can I tell you something, folks? We can't grow our church without the help of Almighty God. We can't win one soul without the help of Almighty God. We can't give and be obedient to God without the help of Almighty God. We can't witness without the help of Almighty God. We can try to do it on our own, folks, but it will not work, and you'll be powerless without the help of Almighty God. See, folks, this morning, I want you to understand, you cannot do it on your own. You're going to need help. The help is in God. You'll just trust Him, believe Him. If you go back to John, if you look at our main passage of Scripture, John chapter 6, verse 44, look what He says. He says, No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me does what? Draw to him. Folks, many people today think 
place that they will get saved when they're ready. Can I tell you this morning? You'll never get ready to be saved. You'll never get ready to give your life to Christ. Because, folks, you can't do it your way. It's only when God draws a person. It's only when God convicts a person, shows that person that they need salvation. Without God drawing them, there is no way for that person to come to him. You can't do it on your own. You can't get saved when you want to. It's when God draws you to him. There was times in my life, I can tell you, I can look back over my life and I would say there's probably three times in my life when I was growing up when God was drawing me. And I can distinctly remember those times when God was showing me that I needed to be saved. And in those times, I remember dealing with God saying, God, I'll do it when I get ready. I'll do it, God, when I get ready. After that service, God's conviction or God's drawing for a long time. But then God would come to me again. He approached me again. And I'd feel his drawing. And I'd feel his conviction. And once again, I'd say, I'd do it later. I'll do it later. Folks, I was walking on dangerous grounds to say, I'll do it later. Because God doesn't have God's drawing you in. Receive it. Give your life to it. Don't wait. Don't hesitate. Because it just may be the last day, the last opportunity you have to be saved. Can't do it on your own, folks. Not with your own strength. Not with your own power. It's only by the Spirit of God drawing you. Showing you that you need to be saved. That's the love of God, folks. That's the mercy of God. That's the grace of God. Drawing you. Showing you that he loves you. Showing you that, hey, yes, you're a sinner, but I still want to forgive you. I still want to save you. I still want to give you eternal life. If you'll just come. If you'll just come. I want to ask you this morning. Has God been drawing you? God, has he been not allowing you to rest at ease? God has spoken to our hearts today. <coughs> Maybe you're here this morning. Maybe you were kind of like what I described this morning. You think you're going to be able to do it on your own. You think you'll come to God when you're ready. You think you'll get saved when you get ready. It's not up to you when you get ready. It's when God draws you. If God is drawing you this morning, the only thing you can do is respond to saying yes. I'll come to you this morning, God. If God is drawing you to him this morning, I'm going to ask you to step out. I'm going to ask you to say, Jesus, I'm coming. Because, Jesus, you are showing me this morning that I need to be saved. And I want to come this morning. Give my life to you. Is there somebody here that says that's me? I need to be saved today. I need God to come into my life and save me. He's drawing me. He's convicted me of my sin. He showed me that I'm lost and I need salvation. He showed me that today. Will you come this morning? Will you come? Will you come? Won't you step out this morning? Say, I want Jesus to save me. I know I can't do it on my own. I need his help. I need the help of Almighty God. Will you come today?
We allow God to save you today. Will you do it? Will you allow him to change you? Can't do it on your own, folks. We need help. We need God. We need him. that you're saved this morning? Do you know? Do you know? Do you know? Is there anyone here that says, thank you, I feel God drawing me this morning. I feel God speaking to my heart, showing me that I need to be saved today. I feel God doing that to me. Is there anyone here that just says, thank you, I'll be honest. God showed me that I need to be saved today. I need to give my life to him. There is, just lift your hand right where you're standing or sitting. Just lift your hand and say, thank you, I feel God draw me and convicted me and show me I need salvation today. I need to be saved. I need to give my life over to him. 